What's up guys? Chicks there from Chicks Tech Reviews. Today I've got my hands on the latest 2019 NVIDIA Shield TV Pro. That's right people, this is the second generation 2019 model. Well let's jump straight into it. Inside the box you will find quick start guide, UK power adapter, but they also supplied a very convenient European adapter should you need it. So we've got the same type of adapter, the same connection as we've seen in the previous generation and the newly designed remote control which is quite reminiscent to a chocolate bar which I'm quite fond of. The remote itself feels very slim. Now you do have a microphone built in for your voice search. You've actually got motion activated backlit buttons. It's got Bluetooth connectivity and an IR blaster for control of volume and power of your television. So yes, you'll be able to control your TV, your sound bars or receivers with this remote. Now the remote control is actually powered by two AA batteries. And if you're wondering how to open the remote, you just slide downwards and there you go. And the batteries are already installed, ready to use, and you actually get good quality Duracell batteries. Now, I was quite surprised to see that no HDMI cable was included in the package. And last but certainly not least, what I've been waiting for all year, the new NVIDIA Shield TV. And guess what guys, it looks exactly the same as the old 2017 model. Let's just do a side by side. So on the left, we have the 2017 model and on the right, we have the brand spanking new 2019 model. You can see that they're exactly the same design on the top. Just one looks newer than the other. Now I put the new model on top. You can see same ventilations, same grooves and curves on the sides. And again, on the back, you've got your vents, two USB three ports each, HDMI out, a gigabit LAN and your power socket. And on the side, there is nothing. So you can see we have an identical design to the 2017 model, but what is the difference between them? Well, the most significant difference is the new model has the Tegra X1 Plus and the old 2017 model has the Tegra X1. So the new model has an upgraded CPU, which is supposed to give you 25% faster performance than the previous gen. And not only that, you also get an upgraded Bluetooth version 5 for better connectivity. And that is pretty much it. Everything else is exactly the same. So you have the same three gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, dual band Wi-Fi AC with dual antennas. You get a gigabit LAN with two USB 3 ports. Chromecast 4K is built in. And of course, support for Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos sound. Now, whilst we are in the mood of comparing, we may as well compare the remote controls as well. So here they are side by side, 2017 model on the left, 2019 model on the right. So you can see a significant difference between the remote controls in the size, the feel and the functionality. So we've got a much more advanced remote included in the new model, which I'm definitely looking forward to testing out. So without any further ado, I am going to get this hooked up to my TV and capture card. And we are indeed going to find out exactly how good the new Tegra X1 Plus performs. I'll be right back. So first of all, I ran a boot up speed test and this TV box took just over 56 seconds to fully load the home screen from a cold start. And here is the home screen for this TV box. And this is Google's official licensed Android TV OS version nine. So in the top left corner, you have your voice search icons. And on the far left, you have your settings and your local time. Thereafter, the first row of icons are your favorite apps and you can customize the row to show your favorite apps in the order you want. If you click on the apps icon, it will take you to your app drawer, showing you all the default apps that are available on the system as standard. And there are only a few apps to begin with, but you do have access to the Google Play Store, which is the Android TV version, so not the full version, so limited to Android TV apps only, but you can of course sideload any Android app you like and it works absolutely fine. The next row of icons is a featured section for NVIDIA games, showing you what the latest titles you can play. Um, thereafter, you've got a featured section for Netflix, YouTube, Amazon Prime Video, BBC iPlayer, Google Play Movies, and so on and so forth. 
And finally, at the bottom, you have your customized channel option where you can rearrange your home screen to suit you and your watching lifestyle. Now let's quickly check out the main settings and go straight to device preferences and select system storage info. So this box has 16 gigs of internal storage from which you have 11 gigs free to use. Now, if we have a quick look in about, you will see that we are running Android TV OS version nine Pi. So here is a quick look at some of the new features. Now, the first one is AI upscaling. And here are the different options that you can play around with in this section. Next one is CEC power control, giving you a lot more options and also the ability to control your TV with the actual shield remote. So onto the tests, let's begin with 4K videos from a USB drive. And we are gonna do this with the Kodi media player. Now Kodi is not installed by default. So we're gonna test out the voice search function and actually find Kodi from the Play Store. So here we go, I'm pressing the microphone button and I'm gonna speak into it. Search for Kodi media player. And I'm pleased to say it has found the latest version of Kodi. So I am gonna go ahead and download and install that right now. And we're gonna begin playing 4K video samples from a USB drive. So first of all, we are testing the 4K high bit rate jellyfish demo. And this one is 160 megabits per second and playback is smooth as expected. I also tested out the 180 megabits per second jellyfish demo. And that also played back very nice and smooth. And finally, the 400 megabits per second file also played back very smooth. So high bitrate 4K files will play absolutely fine on this box. So moving on now to the YouTube performance test and you can stream a maximum of 4K at 60 frames per second on YouTube. We have 15 minutes. Run away, Simba. And never return. <laughs> We're not just black, we're cops too. We'll pull ourselves over later. <laughs> it's official. What am I doing here? You've been given the second chance. You have an army inside you. I call them Nanai. So that brings us to the Netflix test. And this box supports Netflix 4K HDR with Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos support. Tom, Tom Cruise equivalent of India. So that those two things... <laughs> And you can also stream up to 4K on Amazon Prime Video. So moving on now to the gaming test, beginning with Bomb Squad. Now, along with Android games, you also got access to NVIDIA games, and there is actually a free section. So all of these games are actually completely free to play. So you don't actually have to download the game. You're streaming and playing it directly off of NVIDIA's server.
also play games from your existing Steam library and again the game gets downloaded remotely to Nvidia's server and it takes like less than three minutes to download a 50 gigabyte game and the game is then streamed directly to your screen for you to enjoy. Watching Triple H, I think about his rivalry with Lesnar, breaking Triple H's arm twice, putting Mr. McMahon, his father-in-law, in the hospital. Nothing but bad blood in that rivalry. Forget the broken bones and injured father-in-law. At WrestleMania 29, Triple H risked his entire career as a competitor in a no-holds-barred match. One of the best rivalries in our sport. So for your advanced users, DRM info shows Google Widevine level one. And here is CPU Z where you can check out the clock speeds and you can see this is running the Nvidia Tegra. There's no sign of a plus. It's a quad core CPU, which is clocked at 2.01 gigahertz. Furthermore, you do have Android version nine and the box does not come rooted as standard. Now in the Wi-Fi speed test, we've got download speeds of 65 and upload speeds of 15 megabits per second. Now here is where things get interesting. The Nvidia Shield 2019 is advertised as having the Tegra X1 Plus CPU, which gives apparently a 25% better performance. Well, I did run numerous system information apps, including CPU Z, DevInfo and ADA64. And here is a comparison between the 2019 model versus the 2017 model. And over here, you can see the CPU information. And to my surprise, they are exactly the same. You have the same clock speeds, same SOC code name. Everything to do with the CPU has been detected as being the same specs. Now, if we have a look at the system information page, the only difference I can see is the 2019 model is called M Darcy and the 2017 model is called Jest Darcy. Even both state Bluetooth 4 Plus. Now the 2017 model has Bluetooth 4.1 and the new 2019 model has supposedly Bluetooth version 5. Then why does both systems show exactly the same information? So that brings us to our benchmarks, beginning with a Geekbench multi-score of 4243. And in the Antidu benchmark test, we achieved 238K. And to confirm my suspicion, I also ran the Antidu test on the 2017 model. And here are the results side by side. So what does this mean? Well, both devices perform more or less the same. According to both Geekbench and Antutu scores, the performance of the new 2019 model is basically 1% better than the 2017 model. And in real time usage, you would just not see the difference. Furthermore, if the 2019 model truly was 25% faster as they claim, then we should expect at least an Antutu score of 50K more on the 2019 model. And this is clearly not the case. So that brings us to the top Android TV box chart of 2019, showing you the latest TV boxes and seeing how they compare with each other. And as you can see, the 2019 Nvidia Shield TV Pro has taken position one on this chart with a rating of 10 out of 10. Now you can view the full versions of all my charts online at chickstech.com and read them at your leisure. So there you have it guys, that was the new 2019 Nvidia Shield TV Pro. So here are my thoughts on this TV box. This is a great all round Android TV box. Performance is fast, just like the previous generation. Although I can't say it's any faster. AI image upscaling will upscale a lower resolution video and make it look like 4K. And it does do a pretty good job of it. I also love the new remote control. It is very responsive and having those extra buttons feels like a reward from Nvidia. Now all the other features are the same as last year's model. You have Chromecast 4K, GE Force Now, Game Stream, superb 4K video playback from YouTube, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, Google Play Video, and the list goes on. This also supports 4K gaming. 
Dolby Vision and Atmos is supported on Netflix, Amazon Prime and Disney+. Plus. Gaming is absolutely amazing with access to hundreds of AAA titles, including a free game streaming section, which I demonstrated earlier on. And you can also play your existing Steam library. Now there is no doubt Nvidia Shield TV Pro is still the best TV box money can buy, but I have a few questions that need answering. While looking at the specs in numerous system information apps, and I was comparing both generations, you have exactly the same specs. All benchmark tests, including Antutu and Geekbench, gave very similar results. Real-time usage was also exactly the same. So why is Nvidia stating a 25% better performance? The more important question, why call it a Tegra X1 Plus processor when every single app I used shows exactly the same CPU, same clock speed, same SOC name as the 2017 model. Too many things don't add up here and I'm even questioning whether this is really Bluetooth version 5. To me, it looks like Nvidia has packaged up the existing 2017 model, added a few make-believe features and gave it a new remote control to sell this as a new product. They have also taken away the game controller and the HDMI cable giving us less overall value for our money. Bottom line, this is without any doubt still the best Android TV box in the world. This is fully licensed by Google, so everything works as it should. You have flawless 4K playback in nearly every option possible. Furthermore, if you've never owned an Nvidia Shield TV, then I suggest you pick one up right away, as you're certainly missing out on the best TV box experience possible. Now, if you already have the existing Nvidia Shield TV, then definitely don't buy this new one thinking you will get an upgrade as it is exactly the same product as the previous generation, same performance and all, but of course you get the new remote control and no game controller or HDMI cable included. Also, I highly recommend you pick up the 2017 version while you still can. It's priced only 179 and it comes with a remote and game controller and HDMI cable. And in the near future, you should be able to buy the new remote control when it becomes available separately. And with that being said, I will leave the links in the description so you guys can check this product out. Let me know what you guys think of the new model. Are you surprised at what Nvidia have done with the Tegra Plus processor? Um, do you feel slightly cheated if you've already bought this box? Let me know in the comments below what your findings are if you have picked this box up. Meanwhile, thank you so much for watching and I hope you all have a brilliant day. I'll see you guys in the next one.